Like everything in the body, stress hormones serve a specific purpose. For example, cortisol is absolutely needed for survival, rapidly rising in times of acute stress to trigger adrenaline and noradrenaline production to heighten your senses and physical response times in order to avoid getting hit by that speeding taxi as you step off the New York City sidewalk into the street. Acute rapid increases in stress hormones aren't necessarily a bad thing. They, they really help you stay alive, especially when you do something stupid. Unfortunately, for most of us, we're not dealing with just acute increases in stress hormones. We're dealing with chronically elevated levels of these stress hormones. The catabolic nature of stress hormones can have a catastrophic negative effect on your health when chronically elevated, quite literally destroying your body in a slow burn over decades. Stress hormones stay chronically elevated because of environmental input into your body, such as prolonged physical or psychological stress without adequate recovery periods, estrogenic influences from foods, plastics, and pesticides, and deficiencies that trigger unfavorable cascades, such as sodium deficiency causing your kidneys to activate the RAS pathway as a compensation mechanism. When these environmental inputs aren't properly balanced with the support of the protective hormones, which is almost always the case due to the oppositional nature of how hormones work, you start to initiate the slow burn, the downward spiral of physical degeneration. While there are a lot of different hormones involved in the human stress response, in the interest of pursuing leveraged thinking, we're gonna focus on improving the following, since this is gonna create the biggest positive impact in the shortest period of time. Estrogen, cortisol, adrenaline, and noradrenaline. Evolutionary programming has created an extremely efficient stress response system in your body known as the sympathetic nervous system. This can be a double-edged sword, however, in our modern world. In the presence of a stressor, the amygdala, which is considered to be the fear center of the brain, quickly signals to the hypothalamus to trigger a signaling cascade through the pituitary to the adrenal glands. This pathway is known as the HPA axis. The pituitary gland via the hormone ACTH, or adrenocorticotropic hormone, tells the adrenal glands to push down the gas pedal by pumping cortisol and adrenaline into the bloodstream, which acutely heightens your senses, increases blood pressure, and triggers the release of available glucose, then stored fatty acids into the blood for extra energy. Glucose being readily available in acute stress situations also happens to be in limited supply since it's needed for so many other important bodily functions. When cortisol is chronically elevated, glucose is quickly used up to fuel this survival mechanism and no longer available for important thriving processes like the brain's cognitive processes, reproductive processes, detoxification in the liver, and thyroid gland energy metabolism processes. All resources are distributed to survival. The problem is chronic cortisol and adrenaline elevation inherently uses up preferred energy sources and requires the body to switch to a survival metabolism, dumping stored fatty acids into the bloodstream which creates unfavorable metabolic byproducts on the cellular level, such as lactic acid, and lowers overall CO2 production in the body, which is needed for regenerative processes. In modern chronic stress scenarios, we're not actually trying to survive in the primal sense of the word, but your body doesn't know the difference. It's wired to be extremely efficient at facilitating the stress response. When your stress response is chronically engaged, with its resources being used to survive, it creates a downward spiral of degeneration. The good news is that once you become aware of this, there are steps that you can take to stop it. The first step is to eliminate blockers, things that are causing the stress hormones to elevate in your body. And then the second step is to introduce activators into your body uh, that are gonna increase the natural protective hormone levels and help you balance everything out.